Hello guys, welcome to The Financial, my name is Anatoly and today we're going to talk about how to automatically move issues from the uh, product board to development board. Let's say I have designers and product owners and they all approve an issue and when the issue is ready for development, it appears on developers board, they can pick it up and start working on it. Wouldn't that be exciting when it's all automated? So I'm going to show you how to do that. Before, I have two things I'm going to tell you. If you guys want to learn Jira from basic to advanced means workflows and permissions, all those things, then I have a course called Jira for Beginners. It's in get help section for this, for this video. You can click on it, you can get it, and you'll definitely like it. Or the second thing I want to offer you, if you're completely confusing, like I have no idea what to do, I'm totally lost. So if that's your case, uh, there's a calendar link where you can book a session with me or someone from my team to look at your issue on an hourly basis and just help you out with your problems. So when those two things are out of the way, let's talk about how we actually move issues between boards. If you did not know, you can create any amount of boards. For that, you'll need to use software project, comp or it's also com called now company managed project or classic project. Where wherever version you are, those three things. Don't use next gen project and don't use team managed project. Use please use classic project for this to work. Um, now we have boards. This is called a TB board. Well, I call it a development board. Maybe refresh and we'll call it a development board. I don't know why it's called TB board. Yes, uh, development board. So we have one board is called development board, and then we'll have another board that is a product board, which your product people, we're gonna, we're gonna work on that. So I'm creating a board. Um, uh, I've, it's not really gonna work with Scrum because Scrum requires sprints. Sprints needs to be active. So it would be hard to do in Scrum. In Kanban, it's much easier. You move somewhere to a column that appears on the other board and people just can pick it up. In Scrum, because you have sprints, it's not working that well. So for that, you'll need to create a Kanban board and both boards need to be Kanban. Uh, okay, so you can say board from an existing project because you don't want to create a new one. Click next. Then you need a board name. I'll call it a product board. And then you'll need to have a project. My project is called two boards. So I'll just get two boards and I click create board. Okay, so now I have two boards, product board and development board. You can switch between them very easily. So you have development board, product board. Then let's configure this one first. So let's say I'm a project manager and I have my own backlog. So I will put lots of things in here in this board and then um, I want to work on them. I want to uh, flesh them out. I want to create some requirements. I want to make sure that those look really good before they go to development. So I will just create a very simple workflow to do. I have all my stories in progress as I'm working on them, adding some requirements. And then the last one will be ready for development. This is where developers can pick it up. So I go to board settings and I'll change done into ready for development because it's not really done. Uh, it's done on my end, but it will be done when developers completed the whole story. So we go to columns. We're going to add a new column. We're going to call it ready for development. Okay, I write it there. Ready for development. Click add. And then I'll delete done because I don't need done on this project. You still have it. You can map it later. But uh, yeah. So have ready for development. Let's go back to the board and see. Okay, and then let's create a story. Let's create a story. Let's call it a login page so we can test our flow. And let's say I'm like, ah, I'm collecting requirements, so it's in progress. Now we need to configure our development board. So our development board starts See, they both have in progress, so it's already there, uh, which is not ideal. So we'll have to change that. But before we do, uh, there are a couple of things we'll change in here. So we don't need backlog here because developers are, do not work with the backlog. So they work with the tickets that come their way. So we will remove a backlog. We will put a ready for development into this column, remove select for development. And we'll change in progress to in development so we don't confuse ourselves. 
So the statuses, if they match, you already probably guessed it, then you'll have, um, you'll have issues appearing in all the boards. So that's why we add a status here in development. Put it here. And then go back to the board. We have selected for development, in development, and done. So let's go back to our product board. Hopefully it's not too confusing. Um, you can rewatch a couple times, but it's pretty, pretty straightforward. Essentially, we're matching statuses. Whenever this login page will get in the same status as other board, it will appear on both boards. So if I move login page into ready for development, the status of this ticket will become ready for development automatically because and whenever you move to a column, if it's only one status, it will assign that status. So then if we move to a development board, because we have the same status ready for development, it appears for developers. So developers then can pick it up and move to in development. Whenever it's moved in development, it's not in the status anymore. So product board will not have this anymore. So then this is like a workflow. They work on their own things. We work on our own things and then it transitions. So developers do not usually do not look at product boards and product people don't look at development boards but this is the way how we can easily move it from one place to another and then transition between teams you can have as many statuses as or as many columns as you want here you can have your own workflow and just ignore what other teams have because you, it's it's your own thing it can be in the same project which is beauty because you don't have to filter projects filter tickets from the other project it's all the same project it's the same long workflow to getting it to done that was a long explanation hope it makes sense if you have any questions please put them in the comments down below if you think the video brought you value please like and subscribe because i'm trying to bring this knowledge of jira to more and more people and this will help me out for sure and uh, share this video with your friends who are struggling with that or, or they need help and I'll really, really appreciate that. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.